Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lobster Roll series. We are not done yet. We are in fact in Lobster Roll series week 10. As I tried to sort of hide because Google Fox spoiled it last week. But yes, we're into week 10. There is actually a week 10. This week was a week. It happened. I hope it was a good week for you guys. It was a pretty good week for me. And we are finishing it off with the last week of... Actually the last week, for real this time. This isn't this no memeing like last week. This is actually the last week of the Lobster Roll series. It is going to be a bit special. First off, it's 2v2, though that's not super special. We had that a few weeks ago. But it's also not for points specifically. So the way the standings work, and you see how the standings right now, these are the final standings following basically the end of the Lobster Roll series completely. So Gold, Iran, your drags, Steel Blue are in order. But very close. The, the last results from week 9 really closed up the bracket there. And what this week will do, <clears throat> the way it's set up is that everyone is teamed up with someone who is usually the lower elo. So this threshold is around, I believe, Super Giant or Silver. I think it's... I think it's Super Giant? I'm not 100% sure. It, unfortunately, it was listed as Silver, but it wasn't using the in-game things, so I'll need to actually double check because I'm not 100% sure what rating it's supposed to be. But whatever one looks silver is the threshold. People below that compare with people below it or people above it, but if you're above that, you have to pair with someone below it. So it's like a high elo, low elo teams tournament. It's a neat concept. And so we have... Oh, wait, I'm silly. It's a neat concept, and as a result, we have a super giant. Yeah, super giant's the threshold. I think. It's weird. The the rules weren't the clearest, but yeah. So Super Giant or below, you can pair with anyone above. A neutron star or above, you have to pair with someone Super Giant or below. So, point is, high elo, low elo, mix. And the upshot of that is that we have this special, very special tournament, and whoever, whichever team wins gets a bunch of bonus points to their standing. Ah, uh, that's where the user page went up. They get a bunch of bonus points for their standing. And then the people who get second get, few, I think it's 400 bonus points for the first, 200 for the second, and 100 for third. And that is correct. That's, that, that's 400, 200, 100 each. So we are going to be starting out with Steel Blue, who has been desperately trying to get up above fourth place. Teamed up with Ted McFred, tank specialist, against Pudis and Thomas, neither of whom I've really seen a whole lot of recently. But, they're starting the map, man, so let's go. Sapphire Shores banned out immediately. Which is kind of interesting, because that isn't a bad team map. Also, yeah, we have some changes from last week. Lonely Oasis has been thrown into the pool for the first time, along with Akalan Wastelands and Random Crags, a map which I'm really glad to see, because that's actually a surprisingly good map for, you know, being a randomly generated map. It... Works out remarkably well. And then returning from previous pools, Vantage, Zed, and Sparkles Reef. Zed, we saw in the other 2v2 tournament, was actually pretty okay in 2v2. Surprisingly enough, despite its kind of limited mobility, it's not bad. Sparkles Reef, I haven't seen in 2v2 in a tournament. Akalan Wastelands will be fine for size, though it's, it is very big. It's generally, in 1v1, it gets very cloaky oriented. I think in 2v2, you'd probably... It, oh no, 2v2, it was this years ago when Gunship meta was still a thing. But having Gunship or Air start as one-year starts was kind of a thing you did. And then there's Vantage, which we've seen before plenty of times. In 1v1, not so much in 2v2, but a 2v2 it would be a knife fight. We saw one match in 2v2 where it was just commanders rushing, trying to kill. So that was a thing. Random cracks is out. Beyond that, though, we are looking at a map pool that's kind of on the border of 1v1, 2v2. So I expect we're going to be seeing more either, like, probably Vantage Sparkles or Vantage Zed. Actually, probably Vantage Zed. Sparkles is C map. It's never popular. So yeah, Vantage Zed seems likely to me. Maybe a few Vampire Shores. I say that as Vantage gets banned. 
Also, yeah, to clarify, though it should be on stream right now, it's each team goes back and forth banning, and then the lower seeded team, or whichever one lost the previous match in the case of the grand finals, best of three, gets to pick from the remaining three. So the pick is between Ackland Wastelands, Lonely Oasis, and Zed. And I think we're... I'm guessing we're going to see Zed, because that's kind of normal. It's up to Pudis and Thomas, whichever one they feel most comfortable with. Ackland Wastelands is unfamiliar. I don't think I'm going to go for it, because it would be kind of scary. Lonely Oasis is pretty familiar. It's another map. It'd be probably Amp Gunship on both sides if they went for that. Though, again, it has been played since Gunship was a popular factory to build, so I'm not 100% sure exactly how that play out. I expect it to be okay, but eh, it's worth, I guess, checking. You know, sometimes it, it, it varies. And then with the other... What's the other map in there? Oh, yeah, Zed. Zed, Zed is familiar. So, it's up to Thomas and Pudis. Which one do they want? I think they want a random crags, though. But given the remaining choices... Probably Zed or Lonely Oasis. I just don't see Ackland Wastelands being picked. I honestly think it wasn't banned because it, there was not much of a threat of it being picked. Because no one's played it in a long time. I mean, it's... It's really an Evolution RTS map that's sort of reported into Zero K, and it works... It works okay, but it's kind of... It's kind of big for what Zero K does. It's perfectly sized for Evolution RTS because of the way that construction works in the game. It's much, much, much wider construction radius. And so also, the I think the units might be a bit bigger in that game. I haven't checked in a while. But we are going to... Oh, we are, in fact, going to Ackland Wastelands. So we get to actually check out this map that I've been talking about this entire time. Also, it, it's a StarCraft 2 map. For those of you, it's an old one. I think it's like Wings. I don't even remember the name of the map anymore. But yeah, it's it's another one based off StarCraft Two map, like Ravaged. The Ravaged I know is Unlocked Caverns. I don't know what map this is based on. I don't play a lot of StarCraft Two. I mean, it's also not just I don't play a lot of StarCraft Two. If I were to play it a lot, I'd probably have forgotten the name anyway because it's such an old map. But I expect this map to be a gunship. Either gunship or air as the focus. Again, as we can see, it is it is a large map. It is kind of cliffy, but not super cliffy. It's also very sparse. Like I said, for Evo RTS, it kind of makes sense. For zero K, it's if you get the corners, you're like the these sides here, you're okay. But just with the main base alone, for teams, that's. That's not terrible, but it's it, you're going to see if someone gets one of these top right or top left corners, their construction is going to be supercharged. Uh, they're going to have triple the economy if they manage to get one of those. But as the stands is like 10 per side, plus the 5 from your commander is like 15 per side, so... Yeah, this is... Like, in 1v1, this would be plenty, but 2v2, it's... Yeah, it, it's split between two players. Still, it is 30 metal, or 40 metal per second between the two of them. Anyhow... Enough talking about weird esoterica of the map, and more getting to actually the map. Well, soon. Okay, Ted going for rovers. I did say they were a tank specialist, but they have been branching out to rovers a bit more. And on a map like this, I can totally understand the reasoning for that, as it is very large. But it is very flat, so it makes sense to have vehicles. Thomas... Okay, Buddhist going for Kaloki, Thomas... They look like they want to go for spiders... Not sure what they're going to go for, but we are going to find out in a second, assuming they actually go for something. Spiders, indeed. So, Cloaky Spider against, what is it, Tank Cloaky? No, Rover and Rover Plate. Steel Blue opting to not build a factory off plot for right now. Interesting choice. At any rate, Northwest does have a bit of an initiative on scouting, though. I mean, there's one dart coming in there, but... Northwest with fleas able to basically put them wherever they need to in order to double check for later economic development. Glaive coming out as well. Although admittedly I actually I would say they don't they Northwest has revealed more of their factories than Southeast, but Southeast hasn't plopped all their factory yet. I'm really not sure what Steel Blue is planned. Clearly they just figured, well, I'll build a plate. And then use the plate. 
And then that'll be where my money goes while I build up more metal. Which is really cool. I'm glad to see plates used that way. Like, it's something you can do with plates. And so it's really cool to see that experimented with. Same time, fleece coming around the side. Not much is going to be accomplished with this other than a little bit of scouting. Not sure why Thomas is being quite so insistent on going for this. This is, yeah, that's about what I expected. Still, they do know that, st that Steel Blue is expanding quite quickly. That being said, it looks like Northwest is being very aggressive with their expansion. I mean, already we're seeing Buddhists grabbing that northeast corner I was talking about at the beginning. Northwest has quite the initiative boost right now. I mean, it's a bit risky. That's the one thing, is that they are... They're basically relying on very quickly setting up a forward front line and then backfilling. So that backfill will allow them to get back in. As we see, Southeast actually does have a slight economic advantage. And Northwest, it's going to be a matter of how well they're able to defend what they have constructed so far. But they are at least managing to hold off any Southeast assaults. You know, shot with the Glaives getting through everything there. Ooh. Glaives coming in. Tapping first commander spots them. Not going to accomplish much. But yeah, this is... This is proving to be a little bit difficult. On the other hand, Northwest is going to lose one of their Weavers very early on. That is a huge blow. I mean, that's construction. That's radar. That. Oh, more for the commander, though. The, Thomas is commander, at least in a position to be able to provide some radar coverage. But that does crack up in the front line a bit. Southeast now has a path in. They can actually start doing some damage. Quite a bit of damage, too. That's three metal extractors and the Weaver gone. So, considering the Weaver's not going to be there to rebuild, nothing is there to rebuild anytime soon. That's basically four metal per second gone for the next minute, two minutes or so. That will just about make up for having lost the initiative on the sides. I mean, as it stands, Southeast has had a five metal per second lead this entire game. And this solidifies it. So, North... West... Actually... Oh, that's Idle Conjurer. That Idle Conjurer would be handy to have go around Bill, but I think... I think what's happening is Thomas is just going to get that afterwards. I'm not sure why they're doing it that way. Still, again, it's clear this is a frontline assault. Imp coming in as well. And that... Ooh, is it going to last long enough? Yes, it will! Everything goes down. That is a huge loss there. And don't forget, Steel Blue is on the verge of getting into third place. They... Oh, wait, no, never mind. Sorry, they're not on the verge of getting into third place. I just checked the, the rankings. This is actually... No, I'm sorry, this isn't actually going to help. Because even if they got, even if they won the tournament, they would only gain 400 points. And they need 600. So... Yeah. Let's not worry about the standings right now. Anyhow, back to the game itself. Steel Blue still was seated higher, so I'm really impressed Thomas and Buddhists have just... Like, this is what I was talking about. They took the initiative. They're really expanding off that. Getting both of the corners, too. And the fact is, their economy is... I, I said one of them would supercharge the economy. They're getting both. So, right now... So Steel Blue and Temic Fred are not looking happy. Not to mention even more glaze coming in, more offenses going down. The attrition is actually surprisingly even, considering. But again, Northwest is going to start running away with their economy, and assuming their production is in order, which it isn't, to be honest, that, that needs to be addressed pretty soon. But once they get their production in order, and actually that is an opening. Their production is not in order. Southeast is. So Southeast can start doing some damage. Here. Still blue, plopping the spider factory, getting that widow set up. Buddhist's commander needs to be careful. And I don't think they are at all aware of this is going to be happening. Buddhist's commander gets stunned out. Steel Blue's commander jumping in. Flea is coming on top of that to take it out. That's 25 seconds. There is no problems there killing it. Actually, I mean, maybe there are. Venom's coming in, providing a bit of a threat here. Very least buying some time. Second Venom coming in later, but all the fleas have gone down, so that's the major damage dealer. Steel Blue's commander should be able to stop that Venom, but again, that just gives Pudis's more Pudis more time. Oh, uh, they won't live. They oh, never mind. There comes the Glaives to save the day, but Pudis's commander still goes down. 
Steel Blue's commander, however, may go down in response. Or at the very least, is forced to retreat. But that is huge. That takes out the northeast. Steel Blue can completely retake that northwest. Again, their production capacity only just now. Actually, not even quite. The last caretaker is the one they need, but only... They've only just now started to get enough metal that they can actually take advantage of the expansions they take they took, and they lost the main means of protecting them. Again, though, Steel Blue's commander is in a very tight spot. It's going to be forced to retreat once the Hermits and Redbacks get in here. And with the Glaives coming around the side, Fleas cannot fight Glaives. Not in those numbers, anyway. So the Glaives should be able to start dealing some damage to that Venom, though! That's going to be a major problem! Glaives are all pi piled up. This is why I always say to use line move. Because line move means you don't get stunned out by MP. However, the factory should be going down. Yeah, that is that is extra support. The factory is done. Steel Blue's commander able to kind of defend the factory. Will survive long enough. A Steel Blue's commander will not. Glaives, however, go down as a result. But that, that factory has not much time left for this world. Same time, though, center of the map. Southeast has gone for it. Sending a couple Scorchers as an assault, for, as an advanced force to take out some Metallic Strikers before going in with the main body of the army. Same time, though, the Spider Factory has gone down. Steel Blue's Commander has gone down. The Northeast is once again open to the Northwest team. And honestly, if they survive this assault right now, they should be in the clear to just start going hand with construction. But this is, this is a bit of a tall order. A lot of Glaives coming in, a lot of... A lot of recluses are already in play. But I don't think the Glaives are going to survive very long. However, they are able to get in, get in the back lines, get in a few of the... Actually, get in everything. All the all the defensors gone. All the Scorchers gone. Imp at the front lines very nicely taking a bunch of Scorchers out of the fight for long enough, at least, to get some reinforcements. That being said, over to the side. Steel Blue continuing to assault the Northeast. Back in main base, though, this is where the Imp has come in. The Fencer separated from the Scorchers. The Scorchers, way out of position to actually do anything, and that is... That is a successful defense. I mean, consider it. it's in their territory. That adds about, uh, let's see, 1,200 metal worth of reclaim? No, 1,600 metal worth of reclaim. On top of this reclaim over here, which Granite Steel Blue is desperately trying to get. But there are already two Weavers on those lines. Man, yeah, Northwest, they just... They have the production capacity. All they need to do... <clears throat> all they need to do is reclaim. That's it. Actually, very nicely getting rid of all these masons on the front line as well. Cracking open the Southwest, which already, again, was pretty well taken by the Northeast team, or Northwest team. Southeast managing to start breaking up the Northeast expansion, though. But we're already 2,000 metal behind on attrition. It's quite a strong defensive force. And this reclaim has not yet been taken. At the same time, the reclaim over the northwest base is getting taken very quickly. Now it's just not going to last. And Well, it's not going to last as reclaim. It's going to last as units. That's the thing. Air switch coming in here from Thomas. What's going on over here? Air switch also being taken by Steel Blue. Or air at all, really. Their main factory haven't been destroyed, but yeah. Going for air, going for Thunderbirds at the same time. Air factory over in the corner. Going for Ravens. Probably just... Possibly for Factory Snipe, probably, f maybe for Comm Snipe. Ideally for Mech Snipe. That's the thing I would say to go for. Take out Mechs, maybe take out Caretakers. But Factories are a risky, risky proposition to go for. And unfortunately, Thomas, not quite able to get their reclaim. And Steel Blue is it's giving Southeast room to get back in this match. It's a little bit tight, though. There's not a whole lot of it. Especially now that the center of the map has basically been retaken. But Steel Blue, they have this northeast. They've basically taken it back. Ooh, nice Thunderbird. Should be able to clear out the rest. Like, that's it. They clear out the remainder of what's going on. Same time, though, a counter assault coming in from, really, from Buddhist and Thomas down the center. That's the main thing. Venom's over to the side helping to take out some of the expansion, but primarily it's assaults along the center that are just containing the Southeast team. <clears throat> that being said, Scorchers, Fencers, still doing an amazing job clearing out this Northeastern expansion. And all the Reclaim has, or the vast majority, no, not even the vast majority, the Commanders haven't even been taken yet. 
In fact, very little of the reclaim has been taken, completely undermining my point, but actually it does mean the Weavers, if they had room to get around there, which they arguably do, would be able to completely take that reclaim and give Northwest an even bigger economic advantage. And as it stands, they do have the production capacity for it, or very nearly. It's kind of running it close, though another Caretaker or two would not hurt. But still, if you look at the map, look at the attrition values, look at the economy, look at the army values too, actually. We have a tiny bit of time to do that. Army value for Northwest is 10.5, compared to 4,000. So, yeah, not, not great. And indeed, it is an air snipe, oh, it's factory snipe, and it's a successful factory snipe with the Ravens. Gets rid of the air factory. No real anti-air presence either. No crashers or anything, actually. I think the idea was to go for... Actually, I think the idea was not to even worry about that. It wasn't even consideration. But now, probably going to see airplane factory rebuild on top of a swift rush, which is... Or, not swift rush, swift push. Which is going to be, I think, too little too late, honestly. The amount of damage being dealt around the map is just immense. I mean, the Northeast expansion is getting retaken. It's ultimately been cleared out. No one really has it. But... Southeast main base is falling apart. Ted McFred willing to throw in the towel. Steel Blue agrees. And that is Pudis and Thomas advancing into the winter semifinals. An amazing performance. I am I am genuinely impressed. Because again, they were not the favorites to win this. Steel Blue was absolutely like Steel Blue and Ted McFred are both strong players. They both performed well in the tournaments in the prior weeks. Pudis and Thomas, I think Pudis was here last week or the week before, but Thomas haven't seen very much of and they didn't get very far so yeah this is this is an amazing turn they were, i mean absolutely the best choice with this map they took advantage of it. they knew how to play it they went immediately for the economic advantage and we saw at the beginning it didn't totally pan out for a bit but they were never far behind and once they got to secure that front line and backfill actually managing to secure both sides especially the southwest i didn't even talk about this because nothing contested it the southwest was just this absolute economic battery for the northwest team and on top of that, the Northeast being supplemental, so the Northwest team basically just ran away with the economy and went from there. Uh, there was that one period in the center where North the Southeast team, this is about the time that they attacked the main base. Very nearly took it back, but that was about the only chance to do so. But Northwest, they survived, they reclaimed, they took the game. So well done to them. So we're going to be moving on to the next available match. As always, I'm going to be keeping this going up until... Not as always, actually, but I am going to keep this going up until Winner's Finals, because we're going to be doing the Winner's Semis match between Buddhist and Thomas and the Randys. Well, Randy and Randy's fan. Because that is the... That is the next match. Randy and Randy's fan beat out Crow and Anir... No, not Crow and Anir. Blow... No. Hang on. Madcraft and Web Freaks. All right, Blow and Back to Dante were DQ'd earlier on. Madcraft and Web Freak. So it's going to be... Sorry, it's going to be Crona Near versus Randy and Randy's fans. I am not looking at the bracket when I say that. So we're going to be moving on to that in the winter semis. But yeah, it's going to be, I think, winter semis because that wasn't that long. Yeah, that's not worth it. Or maybe, actually... No, I will I will have a transition. I do like to do transitions for this stuff. I don't know. I don't know how to do a break. Oh. Anyway, I can do some other stuff in the meantime. So small break. Be back in a sec. <laughs> 